Good evening. I would like to welcome you to the December 19th, 2022 meeting of the City Plan Commission. Before we begin, I will outline the procedure that we will follow for our public hearing. As each agenda item is called, the applicant or his or her representative, representatives and persons for the request will be allowed to speak. Then persons against the request will be allowed to speak. If there is opposition to the request, the applicant will be allowed to make a short rebuttal. All persons wishing to speak need to come to the microphone at the front of the room. Uh, please state your name and address for the record. All statements made should be relevant to the agenda item and be limited to three minutes. If there are several persons in favor of or opposed to a request, we encourage you to allow one or two persons to act as spokesperson for the group. If you like, a spokesperson for the group may request that the group stand and be recognized. While public discourse is very important to the commission, we have to maintain order in the meeting so that all persons may be heard and city business may be conducted. If so directed by me, the sergeant at arms shall remove from this meeting any person while, make, while addressing the commission or while attending the commission meeting making personal, impertinent, or slanderous remarks, who becomes boisterous or making unauthorized remarks from the audience, stomping of feet, whistles, yells, or similar demonstrations. The Commission members have reviewed each of these items in a previous work session. The recommendations we make tonight uh, to the City Council will be based on the work session and information provided by staff as well as any additional information presented tonight. After completing the hearing on each item, the Commission will consider action on the item. The action taken tonight on these items will be in the form of a recommendation to the City Council. The City Council will also conduct a hearing on these items which will be held on Tuesday, January 17th, 2023 in the Bosky Theater of the Waco Convention Center, 100 Washington Avenue. The record and recommendation of the Plan Commission and new testimony will be considered by the Council at that time. The first item on our agenda is approval of the minutes of our November 14th, 2022 work session and business meeting and November, November 14th, 2022 work session and business meetings. Uh, are there any additions? Seeing none, they stand approved as written. Uh, the first items on our agenda are subdivisions. Uh, what are the recommendations of city staff? Mr. Chair, if I could interrupt for a moment uh, before we get into that item. Would, uh, would it be okay if uh, the Planning Commission took out of order abandonment 22-14? Um, any objection to us taking that one out of order? Uh, that way, in case anyone's here, since we're going to continue it, they don't have to sit through the whole meeting. Oh, uh, not sure, Shane. Um, should we at least wait until we get to the uh, zoning applications to take that, or I, I think we can. I think it's okay to take it okay. now. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's no problem. Um, uh, then, in the case of um, uh, ABD twenty two dash fourteen, what will be the recommendation of city staff? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. This is a uh, public hearing on a, a request from Dane Shelton for the abandonment of a portion of the alley behind 3820 Chateau Avenue, uh, described as being a part of a 20-foot alley located on the west side of North 38th Street, shown on the final plat of Lot 16, Block 10, uh, the Avenue Heights edition recorded under instrument number 2020-037-184, the official public records in McLennan County, Texas. Uh, this request does uh, impact uh, two other properties that face Austin Avenue on the other side of the uh, alleyway from uh, 3820 Chateau Avenue. And uh, we did get feedback from both of those uh, property owners on Friday uh, with some concerns that we would like to address before staff brings you a, a recommendation. So we would uh, request that this be continued to our January meeting uh, to work through those issues. Thank you. Uh, so we'll open our public hearing uh, on the abandonment case uh, as the applicant or his or her representative here to speak tonight. If you, if you would like to, uh, you can come down and state your name and address and any comments to the commission. Dane Shelton, 3820 Chateau Avenue. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> um, Yes, we were asking, we had originally asked to have just the 10 foot behind our property uh, abandoned so that we could take it into our, uh, rest into our property, fence it off. Mm -hmm. um, and then as we spoke with neighbors and folks around, there are two other neighbors of the uh, 
four of us that are affected by that alley being there. There are uh, three of us that would like to have it abandoned so that we could take it in, mostly because uh, crime issues. That alley is very close to La Fiesta and Franklin. And uh, I don't know if anybody remembers the car chase from downtown out to La Fiesta about a month ago. Well, they got them in my backyard. And generally speaking, they either get them in my backyard or, or uh, Mr. Henderson's backyard next to me. So the alleyway uh, is not maintained by the city. Uh, we had to recently take several large trees that had grown up in the alleyway um, and had quite a bit of growth in there. And one of the problems from that is my neighbor and I both lost a dog to Lyme's disease. And uh, both dogs, the only two places that both of them had been were in our backyards. So it's, it's a matter of pest control, it's a matter of rodent control and, uh, and crime. We'd like to see that the, that the alley gets taken in. If my neighbor behind me takes in his portion and I take in mine, uh, that kind of closes off because we're on the back end of the alley side, so we're not up at the front. Uh, we do have neighbors uh, that utilize off of 38th Street and into the alley. They, uh, there's two neighbors at the end that both use that as a driveway. They uh, poured a concrete pad and, and make that to where they can pull into their driveway. And that's fine. Uh, most of the time, somebody's car is parked right in the middle of that alley uh, of the concrete area that you drive in. So none of us down on the end could utilize the alley anyway. It's, it's not something that, uh, and as a matter of fact, was so grown up with trees, no one could use it to get down anyway. There is an easement. Uh, I don't know if y'all have the, the deal in front of you that we turned in but uh, the easement is on the opposite side of the alley from me. So if I were to just take in my 10 foot, I would not be affecting the utility easement that goes through the back of that alley. Generally speaking, the 20 foot alley contains the 20 foot easement. But as the survey shows, whoever did it originally placed the easement on the other side. So the easement is only 10 foot into the alley and 10 foot onto my back door neighbor's property. So they have to get their trees cut and, and such pretty often uh, because the power lines run right through there. But on my side, side it is not. So we'd like to take the alleyway in. I know that uh, Dr. McCluskey would and, and uh, Jim Odom who also signed the petition. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shulman. Uh, any, <clears throat> excuse me, any questions for, uh, for the applicant? All right. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, do you have any questions about, uh, the recommendation from city staff about the continuance, um, to the uh, January meeting? I do understand that you okay. want a continuance for sure. And that there's, there was some folks that might've had a couple of questions need to be clarified. Yes, sir. That's perfectly fine. Uh, we are uh, in the middle of a remodel at our home. And uh, just, to, just so that everybody knows, we've, we've kind of stopped for the placement of the electrical pole mm. till this issue is clarified. Uh, the Encore has agreed to put new power poles down the easement uh, when they come to place ours new transformers and uh, and we uh, paid to have all new gas lines put through the easement for everybody in an attempt to get enough gas to our house which didn't work but that's okay <laughs> so um, uh, we do have agreements with the utility companies and even to the point where we have if we are the last fence row uh, if uh, dr mccluskey doesn't put one up next to us then we'll have an access gate for the utility company just in case they need to, to get onto our side for any reason. 
the power line does cross over into the middle of the alley, right at the end of the alley, when it goes over from Avenue Heights to, uh, is it Castle Crest, right beside of us? I'm not quite sure. When it goes over into the next section, it's right down the middle. They didn't have an alley originally, so it does cross right there. If they need to, they'll have full access. Cool. Excellent. Thanks, sir. Appreciate you. Uh, is there anyone else here to speak in favor uh, on the application? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition to the application? Yes, sir. Please come on down, state your name. Uh, my name is Jim Odom, and I'm uh, at 3817 Austin Avenue. I'm the neighbor immediately behind Dane. Um, and uh, the thing that I just, just wanted to find out and make sure of, that I talked to Clint Peters. I don't know if he's here or not. Oh, you're Clint. <laughs> uh, is that whenever I sign the petition, I, I signed Dane's petition for the abandonment, but my understanding at the time I signed it that it was he was asking for the 10 feet on his side and I was I'm fine with that but on the 10 feet on my side of the alley I'm really not wanting that 10 feet I mean I'm fine with it staying with the city I'm fine with Dane taking the whole 20 feet I don't have a lot of interest in personally owning that I have no use for it and like I said, when I first, uh, when I signed the petition, it was understanding it was for the 10 feet. So I, yeah, and I talked to Clint and I've talked to Dane as well about the possibility of, you know, if, if the abandonment is approved, then that my 10 feet, I would um, either sell or deed over to him. And so that's kind of my, my condition of, of actually, uh, you know, approving this is that, uh, that Dane would actually end up taking the whole 20 feet one way or other, um, because I don't really have any use for that. I don't, I don't really want to be made to take the property and then pay taxes on it, uh, because I have no use for it. Yes, sir. Uh, and, th and that's the, essentially the nature of the con recommendation of a continuance, is to make sure that uh, all property owners affected can be uh, on board with whatever the final outcome is, um, to avoid the situation that you're, you're referencing right there. So. Okay. Thank yes, sir. Absolutely. Uh, is there anyone else uh, to speak on the item? Yes, sir. Please come on now. If you can just state your name and address and any comments. Pardon me? Oh, just state your name and address and any comments. Larry Meyer from 3825 Boston Avenue, Jim's neighbor on the 39th side of the area. One of the problems I'm having understanding is 2019 I believe we had some serious uh, sanitation problems we had to bring heavy equipment down through the back of the alleyway into my lot is that going to interfere with you know future problems with utilities something to think about uh, uh, whatever the outcome would be a uh, utility easement would be retained um, now any further questions to that fact uh, uh, Clint or someone else on staff might be able to answer uh, that. Because my lot is, is uh, when I bought it, purchased it, my fence goes into the easement. When, but I also had the understanding that if the utilities need to come back there, the fence will come down, which it did. But yet we've got other neighbors that are all fenced in also, and that would be the only access to the backyards. Just something to think about. Yeah, that, that's one of the items we'll work through. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it 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 sounds like that's on their radar, uh, and and one of the reasons they didn't want to just uh, recommend a approval uh, at this time, just to make sure that um, all those things were ironed out in advance of a of a final decision. So a recommendation. That there's no way getting around the side of the house. Right. <laughs> yeah. Royal pain. So that's my input. I just want to make sure everybody's aware of some of the situations that we have. In case Dane builds a, a shop back there or whatever, we, we still got to have access somehow. Hmm. Oh, that's it. Excellent. Thank you, sir. 
Uh, anyone else uh, here to speak uh, in opposition or have any comments? <coughs> yes, sir. You just state your name and address and any comments. Lewis McReynolds, 3725 Austin, here on behalf of my mother, Jean McReynolds, trustee of the trust that owns 3801 Austin, which are lots 12, 13, 14 uh, of Avenue Heights uh, facing with the uh, frontage onto the alley. Uh, several points. First, I understand that the abandonment process is not something that is codified in the city ordinances, but is uh, a policy and procedure of the city. And the city website states that uh, a petition for abandonment should include uh, the signature of all adjoining landowners. My mother is an adjoining landowner. My family has owned that property, has been there since 1950. Uh, we were not uh, signatory to the petition. We are not uh, in favor of the petition, and we will not join the petition. Uh, it also states that an incomplete application would be not be accepted, yet one is here, but I understand with respect to the, uh, uh, to the continuance that uh, this we may get there. Uh, as stated by Mr. Odom, those of us on the south side of the alley uh, have the full burden of the easements. We have the power lines over the back of our property line, the gas line and the sewer line are within the 10 feet on our side of the alley. Uh, so any property that is on our side, we bear all of the burdens and yet to, to take in any part, uh, there are no benefits. All the benefits go to the other side of the street to Mr. Shelton. Secondly, his petition only states for 200, his petition currently states for a, the 200 feet of the alley to be abandoned behind his property. Uh, of that 200 feet, approximately 150 feet uh, uh, are behind Mr. Odom, 50 feet uh, is behind my mother's property. Uh, and at the corner of Mr. Odom's lot and her lot is the utility pole for Encore and for spectrum uh, at, a, at a minimum. Uh, they access that pole often every time we have a power outage, add spectrum up on that pole on Saturday. The access uh, to that pole is easy through the, through the uh, alley and would not be necessarily through Mr. Shelton's backyard. However, if the other landowners who are directly affected by this, Mr. Shelton and Mr. Odom, are in agreement with respect to the 150 feet behind Mr. Odom, uh, I would have no objection to the abandonment being to that point, to the corner, of, from the back of the alley, to the corner of the, uh, of the lot between uh, Mr. Odom and my mother, but no further. Thank you. Just to, just to clarify, your no objection would be in regards to a roughly 150 foot uh, if they come to an agreement, we would, we would not stand in the way of that. Okay. Yeah. Any, uh, any, anyone here to speak in opposition on the item? Okay. Uh, applicant, uh, please come down and make any uh, rebuttal response that you, you, that you would like to make. Yes, uh, as, as far as the utility company needing to access that area, the trees in the alleyway behind my house were so grown up, they couldn't drive that far to even get to the telephone pole, a uh, telephone pole, power pole. So they would access it between Mr. Odom's house and, uh, and his mother's home there. Uh, they go up in between the middle because that's the only way they can get to that power pole. It's the only way they've done it. They can't get it. They couldn't get a truck anywhere near it because of all the growth in the alleyway before I cut it down. So the access, I do understand the burden of the access uh, of the easement is on the neighbors behind me. But that's uh, one of the reasons why I feel like, you know, if I move my fence row back 10 foot, I'm still not affecting the easement that is recorded for them to have access to work on these uh, utilities that are on the other side of the alleyway. Um, and 
uh, my apologies to Mr. Odom. Uh, he had mentioned to me that he did, you know, he signed the petition, said that he did want to, to take that in, and then I would take it from him if he did not want it. Uh, but in the course with filing records and stuff with the city, uh, they just needed me to sign the deal and get it turned in so they could get it to the next meeting. And, and so we didn't include Mr. Odom's name on the list as far as petitioning for his 10 foot, nor did we include Mr. Uh, Dr. McCluskey, who is next door to me and is uh, right behind Mr. McReynolds' mother's home, who also wants his 10 foot of the alleyway. So, uh, I, and, and I've measured the footage. Uh, it's actually about 20 to 25 foot that, that we're talking about of my property that overlaps uh, uh, Mr. McReynolds' mother's property. Uh, kind of right back there where their uh, pet cemetery is. Uh, I, I do not in any way want to mess with anything on their side. I, I understand if they do not want the alley, but me doing, uh, me taking in the 10 foot behind my house would not affect them in any way. And the reason why is, is because they access their house from the end of the alley and block the access for everybody else for the rest of the alley. So, so it's not usable to us that are on the far end of it. It is usable to the people that are on the other end of it that accesses 38th Street. And I could see where they would want to keep that part. I would be more uh, willing to say if there's a way to allow them to keep that so that they can access it for their uh, driveways and parking, and that's fine. But uh, we've never been able to use the alley on the on the end that's enclosed, and uh, this this way it's just been a problem for all of us on that end. So we want to eliminate it. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? Any uh, questions for staff before we close public hearing, or well, before we <clears throat> vote on a continuance potentially? Before we close the public hearing, I'd move that we continue this item until next month's meeting. Second. Uh, we have a motion for a continuance by Mr. Browse, second by Mr. Lane. Um, any discussion before we move on? Okay. Uh, please pull the commission. Browse? Yes. Briscoe? Yes. Cole? Yes. Embry? Yes. Pardo? Yes. Terrence? Yes. Jefferson? Yes. Lane? Yes. Ramos? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Vickers? Yes. Uh, okay, uh, returning to our subdivisions um, in the, uh, for our first uh, item, uh, what is the recommendation of city staff? Yes, sir, I'd like to take these two separately. Um, let's do the first one first is the preliminary plat of the Cameron uh, Park Pocket neighborhood. Uh, this is a public hearing on this plat request. Staff has reviewed it and uh, recommends approval with conditions and those conditions are included in your packets. Uh, we'll open our public hearing uh, for this item. Is the applicant or his or her representative here to speak tonight? Is anyone else here to speak in uh, favor on this item? Is anyone here to speak in opposition to this item? Uh, we will close the public hearing um, on this plot. We have a recommendation of approval with conditions uh, from city staff. Uh, we'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I move to approve. With conditions per city staff recommendation. Second. Uh, we have a motion by Mr. Vickers uh, for approval with conditions and a sec by Ms. Briscoe. Uh, any uh, final discussion? Please pull the commission. Rouse? Yes. Briscoe? Yes. Cole? Yes. Henry? Yes. Fajardo? Yes. Harris? Yes. Jefferson? Yes. Lane? Yes. Ramos? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Vickers? Yes. 
Um, what is the our next uh, recommendation uh, under our subdivision plots? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. This is a public hearing on preliminary plat of the Lake Waco Business Park addition in the ETJ, and staff does rec recommend approval of this plat. Uh, we'll open our public hearing on this item. Is the applicant or his or her rep representative here to speak tonight? You can come down, state your name and address, and any comments to the commission. Kayla Williams with CPMY, 200 West Highway 6. And I'm just here to answer any questions y'all may have about the subdivision. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, is anyone else here to speak in favor on this item? Is anyone here to speak in opposition to this item? Okay, we will close our public hearing. Uh, we have a recommendation uh, of approval from city staff uh, for the Lake Waco Business Park Edition. We'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve based on staff findings. Second. A motion for approval by Ms. Reynolds, second by Mr. Victor's, Vickers. Uh, any final discussion? Please poll the commission. Rouse? Yes. Briscoe? Yes. Cole? Yes. Embry? Yes. Fajardo? Yes. Harris? Yes. Jefferson? Yes. Lane? Yes. Ramos? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Yes. Um, <clears throat> in the case of H-22-2, what is the recommendation of city staff? Yes, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, this is public here on a request from Josette Ayers on behalf of Paul Quinn Campus for a request to designate the William Decker Johnson Hall building situated along Garrison Street and approximately 400 feet west of Elm Avenue as a historic landmark located at 1020 Elm Avenue. We mailed out uh, 13 notices and had zero returned on this request. Planning Services recommends approval of this request for historic landmark designation based on the following findings. One, it is designated as a priority one structure in the local survey of historic properties adopted by the Waco City Council. Two, it possesses significance with respect to history, culture, and architecture with a demonstrable cultural association as one, one of the first historically black college and universities west of the Mississippi. Three, it is associated with events that have made a significant contribution to the broad pa patterns of local, regional, state, national, or international history. Four, it's associated with the lives of persons significant in local, regional, state, national, or international history. And five, it represents the work of a master designer, builder, or craftsman, architect William S. Pittman, who was the first black architect to practice in Texas. Thank you. Uh, we'll open our public hearing on this item. Uh, is the applicant or his or her represent representative here to speak tonight? If you would come down, state your name and address, and any comments to the commission. Good afternoon, Josette Ayers, Queen Campus Incorporated, 1020 Elm Street. Thank you for um, this opportunity to come before you. Uh, really, we just are asking for your continued support based on the unanimous vote that we received from the Planning Commission, from the Historical Preservation um, Commission um, last month uh, uh, in favor of our request for historic designation. This is a significant opportunity for our community to lift up um, not only uh, a master artisan as was shared earlier, but for a structure that is on the historic campus grounds that once was a plantation but was, one, but was converted to a higher educational learning opportunity for newly freed slaves. And so for our community to have this opportunity to lift up um, the building as a reminder and a replica of the accomplishments of Paul Quinn College uh, to the East Waco community and to the greater Waco community, and as well for the East Waco community to have an opportunity to re-envision and reimagine um, the building being restored as a community asset. And so we uh, ask your, for your support um, in moving this forward, and we welcome any questions you may have regarding the request for historic designation. Thank you. Uh, any questions for the applicant? Thank you. Uh, is anyone else here to speak in favor on this item? Uh, is anyone 
anyone here to speak in opposition to this item? Okay. I'll close our public hearing. Uh, we have a recommendation uh, of approval by city staff for the historic landmark designation request. Unless we have further discussion, we'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I move to approve per city staff recommendation. Second. A motion by Mr. Vickers, second by Ms. Briscoe. Any final discussion? Please pull the commission. Browse? Yes. Briscoe? Yes. Cole? Yes. Henry? Yes. Carl? Yes. Harris? Yes. Jefferson? Yes. Lane? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Vickers? In the case of Z-22-73, what is the recommendation of city staff? Yes, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, this is a public hearing on a request from Miguel Maldonado on behalf of DIR Construction and Remodeling Corporation for property at 3216 North 19th Street for a special permit for a contractor's shop in a C3 district. We mailed out 40 notices on this request and had zero returned. Planning Services recommends approval of the renewal of a special, uh, I'm sorry, approval of the special permit subject to the special provisions and conditions and based on the following findings. One, that the proposed use is consistent with the comprehensive plan and the purposes and intent of Chapter 28 zoning of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Waco. Two, that the proposed use is compatible with the appropriate and orderly development of the area in which it is located. Three, that the proposed use would not be more objectionable to neighboring properties because of traffic congestion, noise, fumes, vibrations, or any other characteristics in any use permitted in the zoning district without the grant of a special exception. And four, that available community facilities and services, including the road system providing access to the proposed use, are adequate for the proposed use. These findings are required for the granting of a special permit as per section 28-122 of the City of Waco Zoning Ordinance. And I did want to note that Nathan Embry uh, has filled out an affidavit of substantial interest on this item. Thank you. Uh, we'll open our public hearing on this item. Uh, is the applicant or his or her representative here to speak tonight? Just state your name and address uh, and any comments for the commission. Good afternoon. My name is Miguel Maldonado, uh, uh, 565 Iron Bridge Road, and I'm basically here to answer any questions you might have upon this request. Any questions for the applicant? Thanks, sir. Thank you. Uh, anyone else here to speak in favor on this item? Can you state your name and address and any comments you have? My name is Katie Garrett, and I live at 13534 Wortham Bend Road. I work at Kelly Realtors and currently have this property at 3216 North 19th listed for the owner, Mr. J.P. Motley, Jr. Mr. Motley could not attend due to his age and cannot drive after dark. Um, he asked to, uh, me to attend and express that he is strongly in favor and supports the granting of the special permit of this property. Mr. Motley has owned this property for 30 years and previously used it for shop to repair appliances. We feel the contractor shop would be an asset for the neighborhood and very beneficial to the area. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> anyone else here to speak in favor on this item? Uh, is there anyone here to speak in opposition to this item? Okay, we'll close our public hearing. Uh, we have a recommendation of approval uh, from city staff. Uh, we'll entertain a motion. I move that we uh, recommend approval based on staff findings. Second. Uh, motion by Mr. Browse, second by Mr. Farhado. Any final discussion? Please pull the commission. Browse? Yes. Briscoe? Yes. Cole? Yes. Farhado? Yes. Harris? Yes. Jefferson? Yes. Lane? Ramos? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Vickers? Yes. In the case of Z-22-74, what is the recommendation of city staff? Yes, Mr. Chair and members of the commission, this is a public hearing and a request from Seth Sampson on behalf of Encore Electric Delivery Company, LLC, for property at 1200 East Webster Avenue for a special permit for an electrical substation in an M1 district. We mailed out 14 notices and had zero returned on this request. 
Planning Services recommends approval of the special permit subject to special provisions and conditions and based on the findings required for the granting of a special permit as per Section 28-122 of the City of Waco Zoning Ordinance that were previously read on record. Thank you. Uh, we'll open our public hearing on this item. Is the applicant or his or her representative here to speak tonight? State your name and address and any comments you have. Michael Baldwin. I'm the South Region Manager for Encore Electric Delivery, 3620 Franklin Avenue in Waco. As a part of our commitment to provide safe, reliable electric service to our customers in Waco, we are seeking a special permit for a proposed electrical substation, 1200 East Webster in Waco. With me tonight, uh, I've got Seth Sampson. He's our right-of-way specialist for Encore, and Travis Yanker with Happen Associates. They would be here to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Hi, uh, yeah, my name's Seth Sampson, um, 777 Main, Fort Worth, uh, Texas, and I'm the right-of-way siting specialist, as Mr. Uh, Baldwin told you guys, and um, I'm here to answer any questions um, in regard to this project. One clarification I think I'd like from you guys uh, that may differ from the staff report, I think, on the landscape plan that got included. Um, it shows perimeter, I guess it shows trees uh, around the perimeter of the property. Um, that's not something that we provide. We, we would like to see those shifted actually around the perimeter of our, our screen wall, which is something that's typical. Um, I think in the pictures that we included, uh, you guys asked for some examples of other stations that we had done and the pictures showed uh, newly planted trees that were along that screening wall. So that's something that we'd like to clarify and um, request from, from the commission tonight. But other than that, I'm here to answer any questions that you might have. Um, uh, Travis Yankers here with Half Associates if you have any site specific or engineering questions. And um, yeah, I'll open it up to you and here to answer any questions. Thanks. <coughs> Uh, could I ask the city to, uh, oh, sorry. You're, 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 uh, you're good. Yeah. Can I comment now? Yeah. Uh, does the city have any uh, clarification as to whether those, the all-season all screening uh, foliage is supposed to be around the perimeter of the property or just the perimeter of the screen, the masonry screening? Uh, city staff would be amenable to um, allowing the all-season landscape screen um, along the front perimeter that faces East Webster Avenue. I, I believe, is that what you were getting at and, and not around the entire perimeter of the substation boundaries? Yeah, that's right. The uh, exhibit that I had seen had the, had the landscape or the trees around the property um, boundary. And we just want to bring them in so they're around the, fan, the outside of our screen. Oh, wall. yes, yeah. yes, we would agree with that. Uh, <clears throat> any additional questions for the applicant? Thank you. Uh, is anyone else here to speak in favor on this item? Is anyone here to speak in opposition on this item? Okay, we'll close our public hearing. Um, we have a recommendation of approval with conditions by city staff with sort of the updated um, agreement in regards to the screening um, stated here. Um, once we have further discussion, we will entertain a motion. I move to approve uh, in accordance with the city staff findings in the new screening requirement. Second. Motion by Mr. Lane, second by Mr. Vickers um, for approval. Any uh, final discussion? Please poll the commission. Browse? Yes. Briscoe? Yes. Cole? Yes. Embry? Yes. Fajardo? Yes. Harris? Yes. Jefferson? Yes. <clears throat> Lane? Yes. Ramos? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Vickers? Yes. In the case of Z-22-75, what is the recommendation of city staff? Yes, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, this is a public hearing on a request from Ar Arbelio Vela and Ana Gonzalez Lara for property at 1803 Avondale Avenue to rezone from R1B to O3. We mailed out 41 notices and had zero returned on this request.
Planning Services recommends disapproval of this request to change the zoning from R1B to O3 based on the following findings. One, R1B zoning is the only zoning des designation for the single family Coates addition, which includes Avondale, Seneca, and Algonquin Avenues. Uh, two, the existing R1B zoning is more compatible with the existing single family use on the property than the proposed O3 zoning. Three, the property is oriented toward Avondale Avenue, which is classified as a local street and has limited access to Trice Avenue and North 18th Street, which is not conducive for office or limited commercial development. Thank you. Uh, we'll open our public hearing on this item. Is the applicant or his or her representative here to speak? You can come on down, state your name and address and any comments you have for the commission. This is my wife, Ana Gonzalez. Um, I brought some photos, two set of photos. Um, I don't know if I can pass them to you so yeah, I can uh, yeah, get we an can, idea we can, of we can grab, where yeah. the property sits on 18th Street. <coughs> More justice. Um, and I do understand the concern of the Avondale traffic, which is neighborhood. So we do want to preserve the front of the property so that it is part of the neighborhood and not use the front of the property as a parking area or to gain entrance to our property. We would like to cr create a parking lot in the back of the home. Um, so that is, that is our, our idea. Um, the neighbors at 1805 Avondale are my mother-in-law and my father-in-law, which they have no problem with our idea of changing this property. Um, and behind the property, we have Adams Convenience Store, there's the plumbing, and it's all commercial from we're basically right there at the edge. Um, I'm an advocate. I advocate for elderly every single day. I work for Adult Protective Services. I'm here advocating for my wife. This is my wife's. My wife, she's a nail technician. She, you know, she's all into nails. She's, she, we, we sell nail supplies together. We started that together. Um, so that being said, I'm here to follow my wife's dreams. So this is her dream. And you know, I've, I've pursued my career and I'm enjoying my career. I've, I've been five years now, I'm the most tenured worker. Uh, I've been all day, so I'm here to get my life. And, uh, so this is really important to us, so it's important to my family. So. Uh, do we have any questions for the applicant? Did you say that your, your thought would be to put a parking lot there at Trice, on the Trice side of the lot? Right. There's plenty of access that I can put a parking lot there in the entrance. On 18th Street? Correct. Have, okay. Have you had any discussions with TxDOT about that? I have not. Is that a road or is that a city road? I must have been mistaken. I believe this portion is owned by the city. It is city okay. owned have you had any discussion with the city about access off of the off of 18th onto that property? I've not had any conversation at this time. Um, we just wanted to start the process. This is my first time ever starting a process such as this. So I'm learning as I'm going and I'm trying to do everything as correctly as possible. Do y'all live in the house at the moment? No, okay, okay. We have a property off of Windsor. Okay. So with the kind of zoning that you're trying to change to, there's some limited uses um, that could be used in that zone. And I believe you said it, if granted, you would uh, want to make it a nail shop. Is that right? Correct. Okay. So it wouldn't be the same structure. Is that correct? You, you would tear down that structure on that property? No, it'd be the same house. Okay. The structure's already there. I'm already renovating. It has a new roof. It's been leveled. Now we pause so that we can... Once, the, once it's accepted or approved as for commercial, um, then we'll be able to make the changes that we need to make at that point. Um, but we will use the same structure that's already there. Clarification for city staff, would a nail service shop, does that fit under 03 zoning? That falls under the category of a personal service shop, which is allowed in 03. Have we, has someone looked into the parking requirements of 
a nail salon on this site? You said using the existing structure? Great. And, okay. Have you looked into the parking requirements for a business like that on this lot? I have not. I, that is something that I would look into. So the standard parking requirement per the ordinance um, is based on the square footage of the building. Mm -hmm. um, so I believe is it one to two hundred for a personal feet. service shop because it, it falls under all other uses. Yes. Um, yeah. so, sorry, how many, how many spots was that per? What is it? Do you know the square footage of the building? Uh, Price me twelve hundred square feet. So we're looking at six parking spaces. Have you had a chance to talk to uh, city staff uh, in regards to concerns that they might have had um, on the property in the rezoning? Um, I've spoken to this lady down at. Um, at the office, and um, it was, I don't know whether too many concerns, but she was telling me the process, and I, okay. that's how I learned about the process here. Okay. Um, as far as the gentleman is handing her case, he just told me to pursue to this point in order to advocate and to continue to fight for this change. Oh, gotcha. Mm. So, uh, can we make comments now, or do you need to ask? Yeah, yeah I, I think it's part of the dialogue uh, with the applicant. Uh, part of my concern is uh, access to the property off of 18th Street. Um, I don't know how realistically you'd be able to comply with the requirements of an entrance right there um, off of 18th. And you're right, there's not really any access off of Trice. Um, another concern was the the fact that in that in this area of subdivisions that y'all are on there hasn't been any intrusion out of r1b which is the residential zoning so this would kind of be the first in that specific i understand across the street is, is commercial but as far as y'all's y'all's neighborhood this would really be the first intrusion out away from R1B. So those are kind of the two concerns I had when I was looking at this. Um, hopefully, well, first of all, it's good too. First for, you know, first time to do something to change, create change and, you know, I hope it's, you know, to grow with the city. And I'm hoping that we can do that and, and whatever, you know, whatever I need to look into, I'm willing to do to do that and, and make those changes necessary. Now I have a question for staff. So if the O O three doesn't it gets disapproved for this for this change, there's another option. Is that correct with the use of an office space? Uh, I think that was what I've. Maybe I'm wrong, but um, I, that they can use partial as an office space, uh, somewhat using a different. So single family zoning does allow home occupations. Um, the, and that is something that we had previously discussed with the applicant. Um, that would not require zone change, but it does have limitations such as um, square footage. I believe it's no more than two or 300 square feet of the building can be used. They can't use the garage. Um, they can't have outside employees um, and um, you know, generally speaking, it would still need to operate as a primary, primarily a residence. Uh, do we have any uh, comments or questions specifically addressed to the applicant at this time? Okay. Uh, appreciate it. Well, we may call you back up in just a second, but um, I, we'll let you sit down. So. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, is there anyone else here to speak in favor on this item? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition to this item? Okay. Uh, we will, does anybody have any final, just last chance to kind of have a conversation with the applicant um, before we close the public hearing? I would be inclined, it sounds like the applicant was not aware of some of the concerns that were raised by the city. I would 
consider recommending a continuance yes. till the next meeting to allow them to address the concerns that were raised tonight and see if it's something that is workable before we put it to a vote. I, I would feel similarly. Yeah, yeah likewise. Okay. So at this time, I'd, I'd ask that before we close the public hearing that we continue this till the next meeting. Um, so we have a motion for a um, continuance uh, by Mr. Browse, second by Mr. Vickers, uh, until the uh, January meeting. Um, any final discussion? Uh, please poll the commission. Browse? Yes. Um, yes. 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 Jefferson? Yes. Lane? Yes. 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 Reynolds? Pickers? Yes. Um, and uh, for, for our applicant, um, uh, in case you didn't follow along with that, um, so what essentially uh, we're, we're sort of pushing the, uh, the item until the next meeting in January to give you and, and city staff time to maybe navigate some of the um, concerns around access to the property um, and, uh, and neighborhood dynamics, things like that. Um, versus, um, uh, you know, uh, voting disapproval at this at this moment. So, just want to afford that opportunity. So, um, in the case of Z-22-76, what is the recommendation <coughs> of city staff? Yes, Mr. and members of the commission, this is a public hearing on a request from Amin uh, Korzal on behalf of Korzal Enterprises LLC, Series 2430 South 16th Street for property at 2430 South 16th Street to rezone from R1B to R2. We mailed out 28 notices and had zero returned on this request. Planning Services recommends approval of this request to change the zoning from R1B to R2 based on the following findings. One, the proposed zoning is in conformance with the land use component of the comprehensive plan. Two, the property meets all the area and width requirements for the R2 zoning district. Three, the existing public infrastructure is adequate to provide free uses allowed in the R2 zoning district. And four, there is other medium and high density zoning in the vicinity of the subject property. And Nathan Embry has filled out an affidavit of substantial interest for this item. Thank you. Uh, we'll open our public hearing. Uh, is the applicant or his or her, or her representative here to speak tonight? State your name and address and any comments for the commission. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Amin, Amin Korzal, uh, on behalf of Korzal Enterprises, uh, PO Box 2254, Hewitt, Texas. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you for your time this evening. Uh, board members, thank you so much for your time and your, uh, your service to the city of Waco. I really appreciate it. I'm here to answer any questions um, and uh, uh, just happy to uh, be a part of this community and willing to answer any questions that you have about this request. Thank you. Uh, any questions for Mr. Corzell? Thank you. Uh, is anyone else here to speak in favor on this item? Is anyone here to speak in opposition to this item? Okay. We will close our public hearing. We have a recommendation uh, of approval uh, from city staff, and we will entertain a motion. Yeah, I'd like to motion that we recommend approval. Second. A uh, motion by Mr. Ramos for approval. Second by Ms. Reynolds. Any final discussion? Please poll the commission. Rouse? Yes. Briscoe? Yes. Cole? Yes. Ardo? Yes. Harris? Yes. Person? Yes. Lane? Yes. Ramos? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Vickers? Yes. In the case of Z-22-77, what is the recommendation of city staff? Yes, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, this is a public hearing and request from Jerry Dyer on behalf of Versatile Developments LLC for property at 2810 North 19th Street and 1910 Ruder Avenue to rezone from C3 to C2. We mailed out 38 notices and had zero returned on this request. Planning Services recommends approval of this request to change the zoning from C3 to C2 based on the following findings. One, the proposed zoning is in conformance with the land use component of the comprehensive plan. Two, the public infrastructure is adequate to provide free uses allowed in the C2 zoning district. Three, the property meets all the size and width requirements for C2 zoning. 
and four, the proposed C2 zoning is more compatible with the surrounding area than the existing C3 zoning. Thank you. We will open our public hearing on this item. Is the applicant or his or her representative here to speak tonight? Is anyone here to speak in favor on this item? Anyone here to speak in opposition to this item? Okay. We'll close our public hearing. Um, we have a recommendation of approval by city staff, and we will entertain a motion. Move to approve in accordance with the city staff findings. Second. A motion of approval by Mr. Lane, second by Mr. Ramos. Any final discussion? Please pull the commission. Rouse? Yes. Briscoe? Yes. Call? Yes. Embry? Yes. Bajardo? Yes. Harris? Yes. Jefferson? Yes. Lane? <coughs> yes. Ramos? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Vickers? Yes. In the case of Z-22-78, what is the recommendation of city staff? Yes, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, this is a public here on a request from Patrick Farrar on behalf of RJ Future LLC for properties at 912 West Webster Avenue and 508 South 10th Street to rezone from M2 to C4. We mailed out 35 notices and had zero returned on this request. Planning Services recommends approval of this request to change the zoning from M2 to C4 based on the following findings. One, the proposed zoning is in conformance with the land use component of the comprehensive plan and the imagined Waco a plan for greater downtown. Two, the existing public infrastructure is adequate to provide for uses allowed in the C4 zoning district. Three, the area has been transitioning from industrial uses to commercial mixed uses over the past several decades. And four, C4 zoning <coughs> is a dominant zoning along this section of Webster Avenue. Thank you. Uh, we'll open our public hearing. Is the applicant or their representative here to speak tonight? Is anyone here to speak in favor on this item? Is anyone here to speak in opposition to this item? Please come on down, state your name and address, uh, and your comments for the commission. My name is Barbara Rivera, and I live at uh, 612 North 3rd Street, but my parents, my mom lives in the area, and I also have a house at 510 South 10th. Uh, it's more of a question of what is in the mind of that person that's going to have that area because of that next zoning area also. It's a question because they're right together. So <laughs> uh, I know there's a lot of Airbnbs on 10th Street. There's two, three, really. And then uh, they're all surrounding that area. My mom has lived there 40, 45 years, and that's in the same house. And it's just, it's, hadn't become, it's, it's not a neighborhood anymore. It is an Airbnb place. <laughs> and I know that for a fact that the big Airbnb that used to be an uh, empty lot, which was a disaster, and they made Airbnbs, it's beautiful. But when they clean up and they blow their leaves, they blow them into the street and they all go to our side, where then we try to keep our house clean, or the, my mom's house nice and neat, my grandmother's. But it doesn't do any good because they're blowing their leaves towards the middle of the street and they come to our side. So it's defeating our purpose of trying to keep it clean. And they're just, you know, they take off because they're hired. So my, my question is, what is, that, what is the purpose of them having that? Are they going to have Airbnbs? Are they going to have other type of businesses or what? That's what I would like to know. I don't know if y'all would, would know that right now or not. Uh, yeah, I'll, city staff may have more insight into this, but um, generally speaking, uh, the applicant has requested simply a zoning change. So separate with maybe what you're more used to, the, the special permits for short-term rentals that, that have come through, um, there's not an explicit usage stated in the application. Um, so it's, it's simply a zoning change that allows a variety of uh, uses. Um, staff could... Uh, speak more to what those are, but there's not a um, explicit um, request for like a, a, a use type on, under the application. But um, if y'all had any just general insight into what that C4 zoning um, would, would accommodate. So I'll just highlight a few differences. Um, the existing M2 zoning is a light industrial zoning that allows um, various types of manufacturing uses, um, vehicle service shops, um, warehouse storage, um, and some of the light industrial 
um, uses like bottling um, distribution, that sort of thing. Um, but the, the proposed zoning, the C4, is more of a, a commercial, central commercial zoning district that um, would be like our chair said um, it would present a possibility for a variety of commercial uses, um, such as um, anything from residential, like multifamily, to office, um, retail sales, um, restaurants. Um, it would allow live work units if someone wanted to live on the property as well. So that it. We did not, um, in the application, we did not get any specifications on plans for this specific property uh, and what they're wanting to do, but uh, it seems like they're wanting to move away from the industrial types of uses to more commercial uses. Okay, because across the street is the, the old Geyser building, the, the ice house. <laughs> right, <laughs> and, and the yeah. property they were talking about used to be a, a, um, a lumber yard. And then the one on the corner is a, a beer joint, which I'm very proud and happy if they get rid of that. <laughs> I'm very, very happy about that <laughs> because my grandmother's house is just, just right next door to that other little empty lot. And also there's a high, high fence that, that a craft core or uh, the other one put in first of all. And it's like, has an easement, I mean a property maybe two and a half feet. And in between my, grandma, my grandmother's fence, and that high, high fence, uh, I have to keep cleaning that area. It's not mine, but there is, I found poison ivy there. People have been passing, well, they can't now because it's overgrown with leaves and brushes. But I, I've had to pay people to come in that eat and clean that area. And it's, it's gone to the hundreds. So I don't know what, what type of, you know, uh, what do you call it, a survey they're going to do for that, off. are they going to leave that little area alone, or are they going to take it over, or whatever. So, but our grandmother's, my grandmother's house has the fence on, the, on her survey line. Yeah, we, we, can, we can check on that with the, the property owner and see if there's some resolution to that issue uh -huh, okay. about keeping that area clean between the two properties. Okay, I would appreciate it. Yep. I'm not getting any younger, and it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's costing money. <laughs> Are short-term rentals uh, allowed under C4? Is that something that would be an option for that property if rezoned? Uh, yes, C4 does allow short-term rentals, subject to meeting all of the licensing requirements. I, I would say on the, the short-term rentals for C4, it would have to be part of a mixed-use building. It couldn't just be a single short-term rental house. And so I, I think the way these properties set up that uh, and their size, I, I don't know if you would actually see, you know, something where you'd have loft apartments in it or not. I don't think that's the intent, but potentially it could. From a probability standpoint, it would probably develop more along the lines of what the rest of Webster is developed along. Yeah, so. probably would be more business area yeah. shelves yep. or whatever. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and could you tell me, enlighten me, of the, of the fact of them blowing the leaves in the middle of the street, is that allowed? Uh, we, we all, like I say, we always pick up the leaves and I, I would, like I don't that. know the answer to that. I, was, I would think it is not, but I, we, but we can it. check on that yeah. for you okay. and get you a, because, a response. You know, it was a quiet little neighborhood. And sure. Just, you know, between Clay and Webster. It, it's changed and, uh, a lot, yep. Now it's turned into that and, you know, we've always kept it clean and now it's just, we're just blowing everything off. So. <laughs> All right, thank you so we'll much check on that for you. Thank you, absolutely. Um, any, uh, well, we'll close our public hearing. Um, any final discussion before we entertain a motion? All right, we will entertain a motion. Uh, I move that we approve based on staff findings. Second. The motion for approval by Ms. Reynolds, second by Mr. Lane. Uh, any final discussion? Please pull the commission. Browse? Yes. Prosco? Yes. Hall? Yes. Embry? Yes. Fajardo? Yes. Harris? Yes. Jefferson? Yes. Lane? Yes. Ronald? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Rickers? Yes. Uh, in the case of Z-22-79, what is the recommendation of city staff? 
Yes, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, this is a public hearing and request from Jacob Newbert, DBA, Bear Cave Holdings, LLC, for property at 930 Webster Avenue to rezone from M2 to C4. Uh, we mailed out 26 notices and had zero returned on this request. <coughs> Planning Services recommends approval of this request to change the zoning from M2 to C4 based on the following findings. One, the proposed zoning is in conformance with the land use component of the comprehensive plan and the imagined Waco a plan for greater downtown. Two, the existing public infrastructure is adequate to provide for uses allowed in the C4 zoning district. Three, the area has been transitioning from industrial uses to commercial mixed uses over the past several decades. And four, C4 zoning is a dominant zoning along this section of Webster Avenue. Thank you. Uh, we'll open our public hearing. Uh, is the applicant or his or her representative here to speak tonight? Is anyone else here to speak in favor on this item? Anyone here to speak in opposition to this item? We'll close our public hearing. Uh, we have a recommendation of approval by city staff. Unless we have final discussion, we'll entertain a motion. I move that we approve based on staff findings. Second. We have a motion for approval by Mr. Browse, second by Ms. Briscoe. Any final discussion? Please poll the commission. Browse? Yes. Briscoe? Yes. Cole? Yes. Ember? Yes. Tomorrow? Yes. Harris? Yes. Jefferson? Yes. Lane? <coughs> Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Vickers? Yes. In the case of Z-22-80, what is the recommendation of city staff? Yes, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, this is a public hearing on a request from Bill Wetterman on behalf of the Waco Group LLC for properties at 901 and 909 Columbus Avenue, 325 North 9th Street, and 329, 329 331 and 333 North 10th Street to rezone from C3 to C4. We mailed out 44 notices and had zero returned on this request. Um, the applicant for this case has requested a continuance to the January 24th um, plan commission meeting and staff does recommend approval of the continuance. We also have um, a recommend, uh, set of findings for recommendation of approval if you'd like for me to read those on the record. Excellent, uh, thank you. Uh, well, we'll go ahead and open our public hearing. Um, is anyone here to speak in favor on this item? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition to this item? Okay, we will uh, uh, keep our public hearing open uh, as the applicant has requested a continuance um, and uh, we'll, we'll entertain a motion to that effect. Your alternative findings? Uh, sure. So the findings for approval are um, to change the zoning from C3 to C4 based on the following findings. One, the proposed zoning is in conformance with the land use component of the comprehensive plan and the Imagine Waco plan for greater downtown. Two, the existing public infrastructure is adequate to provide for uses allowed in the C4 zoning district. And three, there is C4 zoning across the street from the subject property. Entertain motion? Yeah. Well, I guess depending on the motion, uh, we may have to well, close I, it for the I, yeah, I oh, I, I'd, I'd be inclined to vote to approve based on staff findings today as opposed to waiting for him to be here. Yep, I would agree. Yep. So if the board is there to carry that vote, then... Is, is there any reason to think his request had anything other to do, anything other than to do with his inability to be present? But it, 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 in regards to the fact, or regardless of the fact that it seems like we are probably fulfilling his desire, it seems odd to kind of go against the, right, yeah. the request. Um, it, it just, he was unable to be here tonight due to an illness and requesting the <coughs> continuance. So it seems like it's just because he wouldn't be able to be here. I'll defer to the commissioner if, if I would support a motion to continue as well, if someone were yep. to uh, make that motion before we close the public hearing. The motion that we um, uh, recommend approval. Second. Uh, uh, to do so, I think I'll, I'll we need ahead. to close public, public hearing. Public hearing then, right? So I'll, 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 close, I'll close the public hearing. We'll staring at each other, ready for a motion. Like, and, uh, close it. <laughs> we'll, we'll now entertain a motion unless someone would like to request that I reopen the public hearing. Please don't reopen Before it. we go ahead, just to double check, you we're for sure that it's just because illness, because Bill Weiderman does a ton of real estate downtown, I would assume he would know it could get passed without him being here. If, if there is an issue with him moving forward, the 
rezoning uh, beyond that, there is opportunity to withdraw it or continue at the council as well. Okay, cool. That's a good point. <clears throat> Mr. Ramos, do you have any things you'd like to say? <laughs> I can make a motion that we recommend approval. Second. Uh, we have a motion for uh, approval um, of the application by Mr. Ramos, second by Mr. Uh, Vickers. Um, any final discussion? That is a motion to approve with the findings read into the record. Yes. I believe. Yes. Correct. Uh, please pull the commission. Browse? Yes. Let's go. Cole? Embry? Yes. Bajardo? Yes. Harris? Yes. Jefferson? Yes. Lane? Yes. Ramos? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Vickers? Yes. This is I uh, hope everybody has a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and I'll see you in 2023. And God bless us.